<laughs> I'm gonna start hyperventilating. Uh. Horrifying. No, -uh. not real. Just a clone of Justy. Hey, yo. Hey, yo, hey, yo. <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering why you paused for a second. Everyone, Suka Bled, hello, Russian here, coming to you live from uh, Crimea. Hello. That's it. Oh, it's going good. Going real yeah, good. We're going all right. I did D&D &D that... today. Ooh, nice. My... Oops. I was just gonna say, my day's doing good, too. Well, then you got, like, the ones that are very specific, like, genres within genres, too. Call of Duty. Yeah, I was about to say you're not, there's no, I've just turned on the volume and there's no, you're, you're not coming through on stream. Yeah, we're coming through, but not you. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> so you never. So we're gonna have to do the introduction all over again. I think. <laughs> Technically, we don't have to do introductions for us, just Justy. You're gonna have to do like the little, like the little uh, cat in the hat, like hang in there thing. I didn't know. Just Crash, he said he hates you and you're stupid and stinky. It wants you it wants you to leave the Discord <laughs> immediately, that's what he's saying right now. I mean oh, I tried I tried oh, to stop him, Crash, but he just he keeps going off. I can't oh, I can't stop oh. him. Oh jeez, don't say the N word, man. Jeez. Wait, whoa, whoa, that's oh, racist. You can't God, say God, that. Can I be heard? That. Like, those, that's fucked up. Can I fucking be heard finally, or is it still yeah. fucking fine? I had it on a different track because usually I'm just recording it and I take it and I put it into fucking Da Vinci and there's two tracks and then I usually lower all the guest volumes and I just keep mine real nice and high. <laughs> Anyways, okay, let's do a retake on that. Everyone reset. Uh, my name is Justy and I'm a pepper file. Thank you. What? Oh, wait, well, said no. Whoa, so whoa. Can't, just, <laughs> can't just say that. Here we no, go. Okay. We another... Listen, um, this is Bibble Babble. 
episode number four. It's great. It's fantastic. It's all about just random talking and shit like that. Maybe it'll get a little bit boring, but that's perfectly fine, right? Gucci. Uh, today, we're going to be discussing video game genres, and it's going to be fantastic. I got with me today, Zeno. Go ahead, reintroduce yourself, even though they could hear you. Go ahead. I'm the clone of Justy. There we go. The sins of Justy past. There we go. That uh, Zeno, Zeno is basically what I would say is, like, what would happen to Justy if he had, like, the most tragic shit happen to him? And then you got Zeno, you know? He's, he's a tough little warrior and a little bit of a d degenerate. But he's also a video gamer, and that's why we have bit. him here. Yeah, just, uh, just a tiny bit. <laughs> a little bit. Uh, and <laughs> now we got, we got Retro. Go ahead, Retro. You know what grinds my gears? The economy. Retro is the representation of true retro gaming. It's in his name. He has to know every little retro thing. Especially uh, NES games, right, Retrovin? You know all about <laughs> them, correct? Yes, <laughs> too. Oh. 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 Um, no. He's also a big video gamer. We have him here. He definitely isn't here because he doesn't want to be somewhere else. He's here because <laughs> he wants to be. Calling um, me out over here. <laughs> <laughs> and then, of course, we got Luke. Go ahead, Luke. What's happening? Who are you? Hello, I am Luke. I am collector of video games i am train enthusiast and i'm also the token woman of this podcast apparently because i'm the fourth guest <laughs> <laughs> well you always I thought he was going to be the token black guy well i mean he okay. can be both why can't i be black and a woman huh hmm? he can be the black guy and the woman yeah black guy black peace, them. I'm saying. uh but yes i'm i'm glad you're all doing good i'm pretty sure we don't have to repeat that right yep all right fantastic uh, Zeno is already being called a racist, and uh, I've, all, I, I've lost a follower, I guess, so thanks a lot, Zeno. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Look, all right. The more racist you are, the more followers you will eventually gain after losing enough. <laughs> that is Maybe true. On Maybe on Keck, but not Twitch. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, fucking, it seems like the worse person you are online, the more, like, people you have behind you or something. I don't know. Yeah, you guys might agree with that or something? I mean, if you look at, like, I don't know, uh, there, there's, like, a lot of people that, like, have infamy that have, like, a large following. Yeah. First thing that comes to mind is, like, Andrew Tate. Yeah, you know? exactly. I don't know, I feel like, uh, yeah, we can always go with the reverse. Like, look at me. I'm such a sweet little angel. And where's all my <laughs> fucking followers? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, anyways, uh, the video games, why do people drop your credentials? What makes, what makes you so worthy of being here on my fucking podcast, Bibble Babble, talking about video games, huh? It's something that no other white male has ever done before. Go ahead. Uh, well, obviously, obviously it's because I typed when in the announcements. Oh yeah, I did remember that. <laughs> Even though I fucking specifically said in Chatty Chumps, they said it's gonna be after my art stream, everyone just letting you know. You said bastard. after the art stream, but that didn't say when the art stream would be over, you fucking thinking. Well, I said it was for my early stream. Obviously, we don't. You don't, you don't follow me, you don't watch my fucking my. I watch your, your streams, shit, what but the I don't fuck? know the exact times you're doing shit. What the All right, fuck? I got other shit going on. The fuck out you of here. Get the fuck out of here. Listen, yeah, 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 yeah. you either have on my stage. You can only have one of two things. You either have a life or you watch just the okay. You can't have both. Thank you. Not what true. if I have neither of those things? Well, then I get the fuck out. I don't know. Oh. <laughs> uh, Retro, I believe you were going to. Maybe bibble babble your credentials of why you should be here. So my credentials is I have a hundred percent of fifty million games. Not not really. I'm completely over exaggerating, but I have a hundred percent a lot of games in the last year. Those are my credentials. What would you say were your top three video games you one hundred percented? Ooh, that's a good question. 
what would be my favorite one? I think um, the ones I had the best time with were Ratchet 2 and Ratchet 3, probably. Fair. Because I just love upgrading weapons and stuff. It's so addicting. I do love games like that, where you can, like, just constantly upgrade your gear. Like, without it being too grindy, I fucking love video games like that. Upgrading your gear or your base, stuff like that. Yeah. Does Lukai or Zeno have any opinion on this, maybe? No. Uh, on on the fact that Retro has top three hundred percent video games? Or Yeah. Um, I mean I agree with them, like that, that's a solid top three to be honest, right? I do I do like me some Ratchet and Clank. But I would also counter that point three retro. I would say my top three games. Uh my <laughs> My number one game is a very controversial game because of how broken it is, but my top game is Driver Free. Uh, mm. my, my second game uh, would it, it would probably be Wave Race 64 just because of how fun it is. It's, it's from a gameplay perspective. Obviously there's no story, it's just a wave uh, jet ski game. Uh, oh, I think and, I've heard of that one. Oh, it's, the, the soundtrack is peak. Um, and number three would probably be, <laughs> as a shock to everyone, Banjo Kazooie. <laughs> yeah. That's a good one. <laughs> what about what about Banjo Tooie? Ah, uh, we don't. Mm, I mean, <laughs> I've not played Banjo Tooie, but I watched uh, Fox P Two. Go watch him on Twitch. Uh, I watched his uh, streams of it, uh, and to be honest, I don't feel like playing it anymore because. The game just did too much. It it kind of strayed away from what made the original very good. It did too way big. too much. Yeah, I feel too like big. Fox would. He probably would, but I mean, Fox grew up with that, so he's got a nostalgia bias for it. So nostalgia plays a big kind of suck. Why do you think I like Driver Free? <laughs> it's just terrible. It's objectively a terrible game. What the fuck? Yeah. Probably not surprising. One of my top three games is technically a porn game, but it's also an RPG. So, mm -hmm. uh, Monster Girl Quest. That it? Yeah, that's that's one of my top three. I couldn't say what order they're in, but then also Dragon's Dogma, the first one. That's a good gotta one. be up there. I like that game a lot. I kind of set my um, standard for a lot of RPGs going forward. And then probably Dark Souls. Oh, that's a really good. Yeah, the original Dark Souls. <laughs> I like. Uh, for me, my top three video games are probably The Binding of Isaac, Atomic Crops, and uh, I don't know, probably Minecraft. And I think the reason why I like them so much is mostly because of the genre that they're in, which is roguelikes. Uh, I've always called it like the poor man's uh, video games, you know what I mean? Because those games, they just like go on forever, technically, quote unquote. Because um, there's always like some different mix ups, some different build, you know? Always something new. I mean, wasn't it like with Minecraft? Like they call them, I think, seeds, right? Where you like can put in any random numbers and it'll yeah. just set you to some random generated world. Yeah, it's uh, procedurally generated and all. Mm. Uh, nice, because it makes the experience different every time. Yeah, makes it new, fresh, beautiful. Yeah. Um, but I, I, I have a script here if you guys would like me to read it. Um, we don't have to stick to it like glue, of course, but, you know, it might help stir up some conversation something like that i don't want it something feeling direct it. yeah i don't i don't want it feeling too ro robotic where it's like okay uh guys here's the question please answer this and then we'll move on to the next question you know yes no yes maybe yes yes no maybe possibly um, yes no maybe i don't know can you repeat the question thank you you're not the boss of me now. <laughs> uh, I I used the Google Gemini. I said, 
I'm going to do a podcast on video game genres. What else should I talk about that is related to that topic? Uh, and here's what it had to say. It said, here's some more, uh, additional topics you could consider for your video game genre podcast. Here we go. Uh, we got genre deep dives. Uh, and the first question, or the first topic, I suppose, is the history of genres. Explore the evolution of specific genres like RPGs, FPS, or platformers. Whoa! Ooh, I know which one I'm picking out. Do, those do we three. wanna? Are we gonna go in turns so we don't? How do you wanna flow this? Yeah. Someone can start us off, and then. Maybe other people can contribute to what that person's saying and be like, oh, you have a good point there. Let me continue that. Um, I mean, we're talking about the evolution. The only evolution of like any genre I know of is the RPG. And I believe, and I could be wrong, I believe that it started off with the Ultima series. I, again, I could be wrong on that one. But like in the 90s, the Ultima series and like uh, that sort of thing. Uh, I, that's probably my favorite genre is RPGs. So, yes, and then it kind of evolved into games like you know, the nineties. I think it was Ultima was the big thing, and then we moved on to like Elder Scrolls in the late nineties, uh, and then a whole bunch of other subgenres spawned off RPG like JRPGs and all that sort of stuff. So, I fucking, I, I love. Um, I, I've heard of Ultima, but I've never played it. What would you say it's like? Have you ever experienced it, or is it just something I mean, that you've heard up. about? It doesn't hold it doesn't up. Hold up in the minor, modern day. How so? Yeah, I haven't, I haven't played it, but I've saw. Yeah, about it. it controls very wonky. Um, graphics just aren't that great, and just not even like to a point of being like eight bit or anything. It's just the graphics just aren't well made it doesn't feel like a lot went into it um and then just the controls in general consensus of the game is very clunky i mean i don't know like that might be true listen you may have a point okay but i've heard the same thing about like bubsy 3d that shit was perfectly fine i'm gonna be honest okay I fucking played that. Sure, it was like a little bit clunky. It wasn't like the best of the best, but it, I've heard like so many people take massive shit on that game. It's really just not that bad. So I'm I'm kind of just wondering if maybe Ultima might just be one of those cases where it's just like maybe it's not the best, but it's definitely not like the worst. Not yeah, it's okay it kind of thing. It doesn't hold up, gotcha. Yeah. Like, there's a lot of old games you can go back to and play and be like, oh yeah, this shit still holds up. But then, like, that's one of those ones that's not. Hmm. I mean, I, I... Yeah, I guess it might just be a not hold up type of game. It's... I don't know. I was I was like to fucking trying like the best the best attempt possible, but sometimes you just can't defeat the limitations of the time. Yeah, that's why I like to look at it as like um, what what was the standard at the time and how good was it for its time? You know, yeah, even if it's clunky today. What what kind of advances did it make? Video games, yeah. Yeah, like Mario 64 is a very clunky game, but it spawned a lot of other platformers because of it. Yeah. For example. Oh, yeah. Re it yeah. literally revolutionized the entire genre of video games. It literally revolutionized platforming. It, like, it, at least 3D platforming, not 2D, 3D. Then it spawned millions of other games. Like, obviously, Banjo Kazooie took lots of inspiration from it. And then. Um, Spyro. Yeah, Spyro. Yeah. Etc. Etc. I like the, I like retro. I, I like those. Exactly where all these new ones came from, you know. Where, where where did the concept come from? Like even just the garbage one. Like I played Rogue, um, 
the whole rogue genre shit. Like, it's pretty old. It's not really that good. It's kind of confusing on what to do, but it's pretty good. You know? <laughs> it's, it's like booting up an old TV, you know? Yeah, it, it's like mostly just getting to experience it. Like playing Dagger Ball for the first time. Yeah, which I'll be doing on like Monday or something. So I'll, I'll be it. It'll be the Unity uh, version, but you know, it'll be Daggerfall. Hopefully, you have the mod that lets you fast travel faster because that game will actually be uncompletable otherwise. <laughs> I, I was looking at that when I was uh, looking, putting on mods and shit. Because the one who, uh, the person who suggested it, Thed, was like, I, uh, make sure you install the mod where uh, you can pet animals and they make sounds and stuff. And I was like, okay. Uh, but I think I forgot to add that one, so definitely had to have to put it on there. I feel like some games are really cool now because a lot of people, there's a lot of tism people all about them. They're like, you know what, I'm going to make a mod. I'm going to, you know, do some patches for this shit, you know. I don't know. Because the devs won't. Yeah, exactly. Because the devs won't. But it, I love it when the fans do that. Yeah, I mean, I appreciate it. Like, I don't know. It feels fucking good to just have a better experience because some nerd out there was so obsessed over a video game that they they needed to make a better version of it, some kind of improvement upon it. You know? Yeah, I played the better version of, um, you, you know, the game Shadow the Hedgehog? Well, they have <laughs> one that I don't remember what it was called. I think it was like revamped or something um, where normally you'd have to beat 10 endings to like get the final ending. But um, with that, you with that uh, addition, you only need to beat three endings to get the final ending. Oh, that's actually pretty so, sweet. So it's a lot more tolerable. Yeah, I think Especially since the first half of the game is basically the same missions. Yeah, it's just repeating the. Um, I I I think that kind of also goes into the idea of like, I don't like remasters for games that just they're they're perfectly fine. By themselves there's really no need to do it besides improving their graphics which at that point it's like you know remake it whoa we we fucking love new graphics and stuff um but i i like the ones that i could be using the term wrong i think i'm thinking of uh what is it a uh, remaster what's the other one remake. uh remake remake well which yeah. one's which one's the one where they change shit that's remakes Oh, well then, yeah, remasters. But I like I like when they just make the game uh, work better or make it more. They make it better in that way. Not changing it all around and stuff like that, but just improving upon what they already had. Yeah, that's one thing I got to give credit to this gaming generation. A lot of games that got ported to the newer systems went from 30 fps to 60 fps oh i fucking love it. i love me some smooth games i've always been more of a performance guy over uh graphics you know? don't get me wrong i like my pretty graphics but i want my game to be smooth like butter you know oh absolutely um we can move on to the next the next little sub category if you guys I'm down. But we got subgenres. Delve into the nuances of subgenres within a genre. Example, uh, JRPGs versus WRPGs, which uh, differences. Metroidvanias versus linear platformers. Like that, I guess. I don't know. What? What's, mm. a, what's, what's a Western RPG? Would it be like Fallout Western or something? RPG. Yeah, Western RPGs are like Fallout, uh, fucking Mass Effect, things like that. Whereas JRPGs are, well, everybody knows a JRPG, Japanese RPG, very anime. That'd be like Final Fantasy is a JRPG. That's 
That's stupid. I don't like those. I like the Western one. Cool. There's very few JRPGs that I actually enjoy. A lot of them tend to fall into feeling like the exact same game. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> like, I like the original um, Xenoblade Chronicles <clears throat> with Shulk. You know, the guy from Smash that goes backslash. Um, uh, that one was really good, but the second one fell into more of the actual JRPG trope mm. of just being like a grind fest that feels like it needed to have a, a fucking gotcha system for some reason. <laughs> uh, the JRPGs tend to do that a lot. They'll almost always go, oh, we need to add a gotcha system to make more money. We need to add a gambling loot box for more money need more pay to win stuff for more money uh, whereas western rpgs tend to be like we'll just get all of our money from adding four different dlcs that add next to nothing yeah. i stupid ass thought jrpgs meant junior rpg that's <laughs> no, japanese simple simple versions i i don't like jrpg just it's kind of like what you said it's just, it feels sameish. It just kind of falls into like same old, same old. Go grind this, you know. I think the only difference is that I think a lot of JRPG heavily rely on graphics. Like, whoa, look, I can do this special move that you know causes like a twin waterfall explosion, something. I was like, like in Legend of Dragoon. <laughs> hey, Legend of Dragoon was good. It was well, okay. It was okay. Good old Sheena. I can't make that joke anymore. Don't worry. Yeah, you know. I like uh, I like the old man and like it was a fist to fist character. Just a cuff. I like I like games where they have someone who fuck out of no rules. Like, there's so many weapons in the world, and they're just like, yeah, I fucking just punch people. <laughs> I don't know. Then you need to play Fight Night more. I already played it. It was for one shot. It's over, baby. I can't ever touch that again. Nah, we need a full Fight Night series. <clears throat> Fuck that. 100 parts. We have a... Maybe I should read chat as well. I was just going to ask you on me to read chat to you, or do you want to do it? It's up to you. Yeah, is there any questions you would like answered by uh, the four people in this podcast? Go ahead and ask Buck them shot. now. Buck shot roulette multiplayer. Says uh, Schindler. Oh, Schindler wants to play Buckshot roulette multiplayer. How do you feel about that? As the only other person it. here? I should probably download it. I know you asked me last night, didn't you? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Was that me? It was either you or Shinlar. I get you both mixed up. <laughs> it was it Shinlar and Zerbra that asked. It was Shinlar and Zerbra. Oh yeah, it was Zerbra who wanted to play God. Yeah. And I'm refiffled. You know? <laughs> Your uncle, I'm pretty sure uncle has a two, two. That's too many people. I think it only goes up to four. What if it went up to like eight? See, and everybody just shot the shit out of each other. I don't need to buy the game. I c all you need to do is stream it to me, Justin. I literally, I never die, as as evidence <laughs> by the last time. <laughs> I just, I'm gonna just... fucking count on you then to help me out. <laughs> you don't need buckshot roulette. Just get a real gun. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I dressed up as Kurt Cobain this Halloween. Oh, I think okay. I need a oh, follow-up. Okay. <laughs> uh, Rash says, I'm okay with grind. But when it no longer feels like I'm progressing, I immediately lose. I yeah, agree. that's the problem with JRPGs. Is, and a lot of certain types of RPGs that aren't made with your time in mind, a lot of those games are made with the idea of we're going to keep you playing for as long as possible to keep our con uh, concurrent player count up as high as possible for as long as possible. 
and potentially then extort you with more data win shit to make it faster or to get more shit or it's more of a sunken cost fallacy there are a lot of games especially even nowadays that are doing sunken cost fallacies in their where it's like it is specifically designed to make you spend a bunch of time playing it then you gotta go well shit i've already so far in i have to keep going to be able to continue on or to see whatever whatever it just feels like it's a waste of your time and kind of an insult at one point yeah i agree with that. i don't know i i've always had this issue with those types of that just they continuously uh just I don't know, it, they make the progress so slow, and it's not there to make you feel like you earned something great, it's there to keep you in place. Be like, okay, you're gonna be playing this for a, a good few hours, alright? Look, look investors, we got players over here, wow! You know, it's, I don't know, it's fucking garbage, he games like that. Fresh victims, I mean, players. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> Uh, that's why I don't like MMOs. I fucking I feel like listen, controversial take. Feel free to hate me, everybody. Uh, I don't like MMOs. But most of them suck, and they all feel like uh, you have to invest massive amounts of your time, maybe even your money, to make even the slightest bit of progress. And even then, you know, there's some Japanese guy riding on his like golden fucking tiger that shoots fireballs out of its eyes, who paid for that, you know? So it's like. There goes your efforts, idiot. Yeah. Yeah. I have to disagree with that as an MMO player myself. Um, All right. Shall well, you disagree? Go ahead. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I only play World of Warcraft, so it's a bit different. I don't play all these other Japanese MMOs and things where you can just buy all your shit. Obviously, you can buy things in World of Warcraft, like mounts, but the real good mounts and stuff, you have no choice but to grind for them. And I don't know. I like that. I like World of Warcraft. That's a fun one. How long would you say it takes you to get that mount? Uh, it depends because different mounts have different drop percentages. But if say if you wanted to get a mount that's like got a one percent drop chance, uh, like an Invincible, for example, uh, you just have to run an old raid yourself. Uh, and obviously every time you do it, I think even if you do an old raid. It takes about like 25 to 30 minutes of your time just to blast through it. Uh, just to have the 1% chance that the boss will drop that 1% mount. So it could take months or years sometimes, depending on the drop chance. Yeah, that's that's why I don't like yeah. it. All that time could have been spent playing Ratchet and Clink. Maybe, I don't know, Helldivers 2. Something else, you know. Something. Ratchet and Clink. I, I guess it just it just depends on what your goals are because you don't have to get them out. It just depends on if if that's what you want to do. Like, but I don't do mount grinding. Fuck that. I just play the game. <laughs> I guess it, it's not good to just assume and be. Like, yeah, well, yeah. if you play MMOs, fuck you. You're a useless little piece of spaghetti in life. The garbage. There are, yeah, MMOs have optional grinds, um, but obviously if if all your friends are sitting there with like all these cool mounts uh, and they played it at the time where it was current content uh, obviously, so like if you want to get a 1% drop chance from like a, an expansion that dropped in 2008 uh, at, at, like in 2008 that mount wasn't 1%, it was like 40%, 50%. But now it's one percent because you know it's old and you have to run through content yourself. So you get punished essentially for not being around back then. <laughs> yeah. And on to the next category. You know. Um. Ooh. Game design and development. Uh, level design. How level design differs across genres and influences gameplay. So, um, I don't really care. 
Thank you. Um, <laughs> I have, I have, I've done level design myself. Obviously not professionally, but I've done level design for various different games over the years, and I even contributed to fan projects with level design. So I might be able to give a little bit of insight to it, but nothing much. Uh. I don't know. I don't even know what the question was. Was it like what <laughs> the insight into level design, how it affects games? How level design differs across the genres and influences gameplay. Like I uh, guess, I guess for like uh, FPS, you know, you'd need like a spaced out kind of uh, arena or level, lots of cover to dive behind and shit like that. Compared to, I don't know, like. Uh, dogma dragon whatever the fuck the game's called dragon's dog dragon's dogma dogma do do dragon um dogma balls dogma yeah. balls <laughs> with, with, F with fps level design it's more streamlined so it's more like uh obviously these days everything's up as fucking open world for some reason even in fps games like if you if you boot up black ops 6 and you, you i don't know you jump into What's a Black Ops 6 map called? Let's just say you, you jump into like Karachi or something, I don't know. Uh, that map is, it'll be like very spacious, but like, you know, it's it's in a city, so everything's spread out these days, but back in the day, like Modern Warfare 2 and, and like the older Battlefield games, it would be more like uh, very tight corners you would go around and, and, you know, it'd be like basically just sprinting down hallways and just firing them when you saw like a pixel of someone's kneecap pop out a door frame, but now it's like <laughs> Just snipe people across maps because they're so big. Yeah. Um. Same RPGs. Everything, it's a lot. Everything's more spaced out in, in RPG games now, like open world. Versus... And and that's mostly for like going around collecting like shit from the ground or something. Oh, I gotta like yeah. The Witcher Three. It's like oh, I gotta go get this fucking specific flower from this of the map. Be right on over there, you know. Yeah. It's. Definitely gaming has become every every game, every map now has to be massive open worlds, even in games that don't require it. It's just it's got it's gone crazy. Level yeah. design. And that's why games take years to make now. Uh gen genuine question. I'm actually gonna subvert the genre topic, whatever of how do you guys feel about graphics versus performance? I need everyone's opinion. Because when you say performance, are you saying like if if the game chugs, or are you saying like it like feels good? But let's take Alan Wake Two for example, and how it doesn't run on like ninety percent of the PCs out there because it's <laughs> too fucking fat of a video game. Do you think the graphical improvement is worth the not being able to play it for most people, or do you think we've we've reached a point in society where it's like? Why the fuck is it? Why are we still trying to improve graphics? We're at the fucking peak here, people, you know? I mean, if you go any further, it would just be like real life. Yeah, exactly. It's like, go fucking look at something in real life. Go go look at a cosplay or some shit. Yeah, go, go to fucking, uh, what is it? Go to a comic con or a video game con. Look at all these fucking role players. That's, all these uh, NPCs. <laughs> That's my problem with video games. Uh, as the as the generations go on, uh, games are getting a bit too realistic in graphics. And uh, obviously, I'm not trying to be a boomer mentality where it's like, oh, everything's getting too real looking. I, I don't really mind so much where we're at now. I think should be, you know, what I, I feel like right now. This should be this should be the peak. I feel like this is just the graphics right now is what we should be going with going forward for the next couple of decades or something because. If it keeps going, then everything's going to be like 8K textures, real life, like um, 300 hertz, like 300 FPS sort of stuff. Uh, and you play games to escape reality, not 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 emulate it. So I, I don't like my games too realistic looking. <laughs> yeah, and everything's going to be like fucking really like two terabytes to download. Oh like, yeah, it's getting wild. Fucking bullshit. I fucking uh. I don't know. You ever watch those cool like YouTube videos where it's like, look at all these specific details from all these video games you may have missed, right? And it's like, oh, did you know that in, I don't know, I don't know if this is true. Oh, did you know in Metal Gear Rising Revengeance that when you do your little slice action, you can actually slice the PNG grass or some shit like that? Uh, it feels like a lot of games 
the more graphics that they have, the less innovation they actually put into gameplay or anything. It's like, they're like, okay, well, it looks pretty. We don't have to do anything else now. It, it, it'll just sell because it's pretty. You know what I mean? I get a game where they walk constantly. <laughs> yeah, that, 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 that's a good Make point, Retro. Again. Make it a game where I have a giant backpack filled with stuff. You just walk for 70 hours. Oh, <laughs> oh dude, even, Fox, Fox would fucking kill you if you were here. Don't even get me started on the walking simulator genre, but that is... Anyone remember uh, Firewatch? That little walking simulator game? Oh, yeah. That, yeah. Was, oh. that was the start of it. That was the start of the walking simulators, <laughs> and I'm sick of it. It's just nonsense. I hate it. But it's pretty! Oh my gosh. No, if, I, if I wanted to look at video game art, I would go put up Assassin's Creed Origins and I would go and, go and play the history, like the history simulation section of that game if I wanted to, to look at pretty things. Uh, it's just a waste of time. I, I agree with that. I mean, to a point, it's like, there's one side of me that's like, well, if you ever want to have like a serious depth story and like, oh man, this is so touching and detailed, you know, you can't really have too much player interaction or else you're like, I don't know, maybe a cutscene's going on and you're fucking throwing shit around in the background. Uh, but at the same time, if you want to make a video game that has like a message or some deep understanding or something like that, why make it a video game? Why make it where you're just walking around? Why not just a movie or something like that? I don't know. That's actually something I was going to kind of like touch on as well. And, and as, you, as you've just said that, uh, I do have a point to bring up in that, like in that same subject. Uh, and this is going to get me a lot of hate with artists. It's also going to get me a lot of hate with various different uh, communities. But I'm going to be honest with you. So right now we're in this movement in video games where I don't know if you've noticed indie games are, are being empowered. And uh, that's fine. Indie games, like small creators, 100%. Some indie games are better than AAA games. 100% agree. Make your shit. Good job. Two thumbs up. It's, it's, the, it's the movement that's going on right now in video games where it's like, oh, I can't, I, I'm, we're so happy. We're now in the era where artists get to express themselves with the art of video games and um you know people people of certain uh you know backgrounds and cultures can now relate to video games in a better way and i'm just sitting there like shut the fuck up it's a, <laughs> why 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 do we have to use video games as the lightning rod for a social movement such as artistry and people being from different creative backgrounds video games are supposed to be a source of entertainment they're supposed to be, you're supposed to play a game, you're supposed to escape reality for a little while. Like, for example, and I, this is where I'm going to get the hate, Life is Strange, right? Clearly Life is Strange is a game aimed at people that are part of, you know, like the LGBTQ community and stuff like that. Fair enough. That's the story. I've never played it. I, I just have watched a lot of bits of gameplay on it. I don't actually know if it has a good story. But games like that are used to tell the story of, um you know, a coming of age and um, dealing with, you know, the fact, like, coming to the fact, the terms that, you know, <clears throat> how, how to deal with being, like, you know, like, gay and stuff like that, and and just basically, just like, it's like a it's like a life lesson to people who are in those communities, but why do we need to use, I don't understand why we need to make video games like that to help people come to terms and, and fit in with society and truly understand who they are. Is that not what, like, talking to people is supposed to be for and, and coming together physically in groups is supposed to be for? Like, why why is video games being used as an artistic movement and also to try and also push, you know, obviously this is different to what I've just said about the LGBTQ, but, like, political correctness is also being implemented in video games as well. And, it's, and, and politics in general has also been... Like, like game, video games just feel like a lightning rod for people to get like their agendas across, and I don't understand it. Video games used to be a simple thing you turn on and turn your brain off. It might well, that's just what media has become nowadays. Yeah, I, I, I was going to say, I think it's, it's a general media. Um, and I would say, if I wanted to argue that side, it's more than likely they're like, oh, well, we finally have representation in I can only assume that would be their take on. 
I've heard that like many of other times, like some people like, well, you know, growing up as someone who was gay, you know, I didn't really have any representation when it was always just a guy kissing that. So it feels nice to have video games kind of orientated toward what I like, you know. Which I can kind of understand. Growing up, I liked Chowder, the cartoon show, because it had a fat fucking little character. And I was a fat little fucking boy, so... <laughs> And I was like, in a too. yeah, exactly. I was like, yes, finally a fat little fucking piece of shit like me. You know, maybe, maybe that's what they're thinking. You know, why so many people are making video games or media in general like that. I mean, I kind, I kind of, I kind of get that aspect of it. That's kind of like, uh, you know, a fair, a fair enough. It's just, um. Obviously, it's it's usually it it, it can uh, whenever you make your a video game, you know, solely solely focused on those sort of topics. Yeah. If we look if we look at the games that have really tried to do that and failed, it's been more so failures than successes. So I think if people are going to do those sort of video games, they really need to you know speak to the community they're trying to empower because I think that's where the disconnect is. I feel like the they're making games about the LGBTQ community and stuff, but they're not actually, you know, in those communities themselves. They're just kind of going off of like a, a perspective of what they think. Yeah. Those people, like I don't want to say those people, like that that Them community is, is like, yeah, that like that community is like, like they're guessing, and that's why more games fall on their face than they do succeed. So I think if we're going to continue to make that, they should definitely get in get in those communities and speak to them and be like, you know, what. What makes you tick as a person in this community? Like, what do you think? Sort of yeah. thing, rather than just being like, this is what I think of that, of, uh, that community. I think uh, there's two issues. Uh, it's that um, a, lot of, a lot of the games or media or that kind of group and all that stuff, um, for me, I'm not part of that group, but from the outside, it just kind of looks uh, predatory that all these companies or all these video game producers, anything like that, it feels like they're just kind of adding it in there to kind of bait uh, that audience in and be like, look, it has this feature. You can kiss someone of the same sex. Whoa, look at it. You know, and it's like, you don't genuinely, you didn't genuinely put that in there because you wanted it to be integral to the story or the video game. You put it in there because it's just bait. Congratulations. Um, yeah. The the secondary thing is uh, I forget, but <laughs> it, it's mostly just that it's a uh, you know it's a lot of bait. It's, that's what it feels like. Oh, I remember the second. Thing. Um, I think when they focus too much on it is the big issue. Like. I don't know about you guys, but if the fucking video game was about a guy going after a girl and he just talks about how he's straight all the time or something like that, I'd be like, what the fuck is this? I don't want to play this video game. This is boring, you know? And I feel like maybe that's how the opposite is. You know, a lot of the video games are, the main focus is, hey, did you know that this is a part of the LGBTQ community? Hello, look at this, you know? But there needs to be it. more. Like getting railed. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I would say for me, like, I guess, like, if we're talking about like messages and stuff in games, yeah. I don't mind it if it's subtly done. You know, like, I'll give you a good example: Ratchet and Clank, the earlier games. <laughs> right. Were very no, I'm genuinely they were very anti like consumerism capitalist yeah you know they didn't like shove it in your face with like capitalism bad oh, yeah, that's, bad. oh yeah like because they've got like the vendor like the vendor guy like they, that's like the most they, they make fun of the, yeah i see i see what you mean like they make fun of that like with the vendor for buying guns and stuff yeah yeah. yeah it's <clears throat> if i can go ahead and wrap it on back down to uh what this podcast was all about in the first place uh it's kind of like the theme of, you know, anti-consumerism or shit like that, you know. 
what your gender is, stuff like that. That's like a subgenre. That's in the background, or it should be in the background. It contributes to everything else in its own way, but it's not on the forefront, it's in the background. You need something in the forefront. You need FPS, LGBTQ, you know, <laughs> or something like that, or fucking, uh, you know, RPG, anti-consumerism or something like that. Game first message, a little bit in the background there. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, because you're, yeah, you're trying to escape reality when you play games and consume that entertainment. You don't want to be sitting, you know, messaging in your face every two minutes. Yeah, exactly. It, it there, There's another thing about uh, games that I talk about. It's, uh, I think we've already kind of dabbled on it a little bit, but it's, I've come up with a little bit of a, a tiny smidge, if you will, of, um, advice or something like that and it's that is your game something i can just like watch a youtube video on you know what i mean or is it something where i have to play it in order to experience it yeah like call of duty you're like you, you can watch a youtube video on that story because you know what you're getting versus an rpg there's like a hundred different branching paths yeah so you, you'll, you'll never truly get all the paths and choices by watching one Person. Yeah, or like uh, you know, maybe even a like a fighting game or something like that. It's like, yeah, you know, how many? How does this person take on this opponent? You know, this is interesting, but I feel like games where you could just like you look up a YouTube video, and most of the time it's a walking simulator because that, you genuinely can just do that. It's the same thing over and over again. No difference differentiating paths or different ways that you can get to those points. Um, they just, I don't know, they, they feel like boring games to me. See, and uh, the way, to, oh, you can go ahead first. Luke. That's fine, I've been talking too much when you go. Oh, I was just going to say, um, the, the way that people could play those games while watching them on YouTube, hook up your controller, and as they're walking, Push the analog stick forward. <laughs> I like that. It's like, it's like an FMV or something. I like that. Good idea. Like Phantasmagoria, am I right? Mm -hmm. Listen, okay. Listen. <laughs> it, was a, it was an okay game for the most part. I still need to play it. I've got it on my hard drive. It's, it's a bit wacky. A little bit like, ah, you didn't use this hammer in the basement to whack on this specific drum? Oh, well... Guess you're stuck for the next 12 hours guessing what to do. So you basically had the, the problem I was having with Dracula. And I did yeah. pull up a guide and I said, Fuck, I hate this. I'm not even playing the game at this point. I'm just yeah. reading words and I'm pushing a button. <laughs> That's where, um, you know, like, game, oh, in fact, I'll bring it back to the topic. Uh, fact, what was it? What, was, what were we talking about again? Let's just forget. So I was going to actually contribute to that, so I had a thought about it, but I can't remember what. Oh, we were just talking about game genres. No, the last, we last thing we were talking about was level design. Uh, okay. Well, Retro, what, what, what was it? What were you just talking about? Because I had that point here, and like, I had the hot point. Oh, uh, move the analog stick forward. Oh, so. right, okay, I got it. No, like, like, uh, play, yeah, I remember now, like, why would you just look up a game, like, when you, yeah. Uh, I actually had that experience with, like, before... This was early days of YouTube, though. Uh, whenever the first Borderlands game came out, uh, I remember it came out, and I think it was 2009, and I was like, Whoa! Look at this! It's Borderlands! Look at this! And then I was kind of like, I looked at the genre of it, and I think the genre of Borderlands is... It's not RPG, obviously, but I think it's just, like, lure shooter. So... In my undeveloped mind in 2009, when I was in high school, I was like, why would I play this when I can just watch someone on YouTube play it? Because it's not like... <laughs> but then I realized when I, when I started watching it, I was like, okay, this might be an FPS, but the fact that there's all these gun combinations makes it more interesting. Like, I could play this and get a gun that someone else can't get. Uh, so that's kind of an example of sometimes you can misjudge a game. 
at first like maybe you'll go and watch a video of it and then you'll be like what what hold the train wait a second hold on look at all these look at all these different variables this person's getting i'm gonna have to go and play this myself that is so, true yeah I, that can happen it, it's also i don't know maybe i may have been too generalized on that statement because like you can watch someone play amnesia the dark descent you know and it, it'll be the same thing no matter what, even if you played it yourself, but there's, there's a big difference playing it yourself because uh, maybe you just feel that tension because you're the one who's actually in control at that point. The same story beat for, you know, it's different because you're in the seat. Like I the had, experience. Yeah, I had, I had that with uh, Fatal Frame <laughs> actually back in, back in the day. I was too scared to play Fatal Frame back in the day. And I was like, oh, I can't play. So I just, uh, basically, I, I turned into, um, uh, what were those guys called again? That played, it was like Brad. Brad, like Brad was like the lead guy in it and he streamed it, played Fatal Frame. Uh, four player podcast. That was it. Back in the day, Justin TV days of Twitch, if anyone remembers those days. <laughs> uh, I, 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 I turned into Justin TV and I was like, oh, bu, 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 bu. Want, all my friends are talking about Fatal Frame, but I'm too scared to play it. And then I, I, basically, I felt a lot better because I was watching someone else play it. Uh, <laughs> but definitely, the tension of those horror games are a real thing. Like, sometimes I'll just not play a horror game because I'm, I don't want to get jump scared. And I'll just watch someone else play it and I'm nice and relaxed. Letting, letting someone take the, take the bait for you. Yeah. Because that was also the same situation with, I don't know if anyone knows the game, Dew on the Grudge for the Wii. Oh, oh I still need that to play a, that. That is a terrifying little game, that. <laughs> it does a little I don't think I've heard of that one. Oh, it's good. Oh, it's real good. It's, it's so scary. Yeah, you should definitely play it, Justy. Oh, thank you. The Wii room. I thought you could. You're not able to emulate it with a controller. You can, and kind of. might be a little. Bit. How do you guys feel about consoles where it's like, ah, uh, we have a gimmick, and let me tell you, you're never gonna be pl be able to play this game unless you can emulate it or somehow re replicate it, baby. Let's get it going. I think the Wii is. is I, I'm sure the Wii and the Wii U are the only consoles that have really done that. Like everything else is what like about, all being ported. What about the one thing, Visual Boy, whatever it's. Oh, called. the Virtual Boy. Virtual. Boy. Uh that. Well, I mean, that was a failed. <laughs> that was a failed console, and I think it's got like ten games for it. But yeah, like to 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 play those games, you do need to own that that console, which sucks. I guess. Be right back. I guess. I was gonna say something, but I'm drawing a blank. Colorful. Well, we were talking about uh, what was it? Uh, emulation, right? Yeah. No, where were we? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> but uh, basically, with uh, I'm kind of remembering now with emulation. Um, I I've noticed like I don't think it's a big deal if um. Like, say, a game ha emulator has a gimmick or a console has a gimmick. As long as you have the option to use, like, a regular controller. Oh, yeah. Which the Wii did for some games. Yeah. I remember. Also, with the, um... I know some of the PS3 games are like, Oh, look, you can the PlayStation 3 controller to balance this. Or you can... Run that off. And I appreciate. It. Yeah. The man who does not have a gyroscope controller or axi. Thank you. Uh, the the uh, I I don't even even though I have a PS Five, I've never actually realized it. The the PlayStation <clears throat> stick with that gimmick, like with the whole mo like movement, like, can, or did they get rid of that? I think oh they yeah, have. they still have it. So much so that, in fact, I have a dual sense right now, and the uh, you can uh, move the controller on PS3 games. Ah, with it, I remember they featured that on a uh, was it Astro's 
Astro Boy World or whatever. Playroom. Playroom. Again, there you, you, go. you could blow on it as well. They've got like a little, like a, a blow sensor, or not a blow sensor, but like a temperature sensor or something. Yeah. Wait. Games don't use it though. That 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 felt like like the Nintendo DS thing they had back in the day where you blew into it. <laughs> Remember? Yeah, I remember that. Like the Sims Two had that for the DS. You like whenever like you had the. Uh, this is me getting a bit tism here. Uh, the Sims Two for the, the the OG Nintendo DS. Like you owned the hotel, and to get rid of those, like if you logged off for too long, you come back on, and you'd have way too much dust in your hotel lobby. And to get rid of it, you had to basically like <laughs> blow on your DS screen to get rid of it. Otherwise, it wouldn't work. You couldn't use your stylus to get rid of it, and it was so frustrating. Think your DS was going at it. Oh, probably not. And probably the people on the, the, the bus ride to school didn't enjoy me going every two minutes. <laughs> <laughs> like, what the fuck is he doing? They're like, uh, must be on the wrong bus. <laughs> yeah, he's, yeah, this bus isn't yellow. Hold on a minute. This bus ain't short. Hold up. Wait a minute. Uh, well, I mean, the windows taste the same regardless. So. I, I think some video game cool, but at the same time, it's like, shut the fuck up. I mean, let me play games regularly, you know? We've already peaked. You don't need to go. Do you guys think there's going to be any, like, different improvements or anything like that when it comes to video? I think it'll be like, oh, everyone, we how stall your brain chip. Fucking Call of Duty 5 or 10 just released. We got to play it right now. <laughs> <laughs> I think so, I especially think, with the neural link stuff. I think the uh, the prospects of games in the future are all becoming basically just exclusively like VR shit. Yeah. And uh, that would whatever, suck. And whatever the future of VR becomes, be like the neural link shit. I don't think it would ever be neural link because you know the guy they tried that on got his brain fried. Um, but I mean, it's worth. No. Come on. Um, but it's, seeing as that's going to be eventually the future, I don't know if you guys ever watched Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the season where they were actually in the future. Oh, oh, fast yeah. forward. So yeah. we, you just so happen yeah. to fucking be speaking to the number one fan, Retrovin. True. Um, but like how Mikey had that VR set up in the room where he was running around on it. I think that'll eventually kind of become what VR is and what gaming tends to become. To the point of like you're inserting yourself into the game and actually having like AAA fucking VR games that feel like actually good games rather than just clunky uh, gimmicks, self insert games. Well, if you spend right now, if you spend, I think it's two thousand dollars just for the thing. You spend two thousand dollars, you buy yourself a copy of Skyrim VR, and you get yourself an Oculus or whatever, whatever like Meta headset. Quest, baby. Yeah, that one. Um, they actually now sell haptic feedback suits, and I've I don't know if you guys have seen the videos, but like someone was literally standing at a waterfall in Skyrim, and they literally described the fact that. It felt genuinely as if water was rushing all over the skin. The haptic feedback was that good, so I think we're we're going towards that as well. Like the fact that the haptic feedback suits exist and it's accurate. And we're gonna have a scary. haptic cock sleeve eventually. Okay, oh, all right. I don't know about that one. Maybe we're going to in uh, like actually go into a uh, fucking what's it called? What's 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 Cyberpunk twenty seventy seven? Dystopian. Yeah, we're going into like a dystopian world where like people are gonna go and fucking like upload their little brain link and fucking work for like n twelve hours or something. Go home <laughs> and play like play on their fucking virtual reality machine for like an hour and go to sleep blissful. Of course, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you remember, remember when like the, the, the Xbox One came out, like they tried to make it an only online console? Can you imagine if they did that with like the brain chip? If you don't sync your brain with the cloud, you're gonna get your uh, you're gonna get your ass shut down. Oh dude, absolutely. Yeah, it's gonna fry. <laughs> it's gonna be like uh, fucking it's gonna be like a Black Mirror episode or some shit. It's oh be like <laughs> Oh, you wanna go to sleep, watch this fucking ten minute ad first, you know? <laughs> oh, <laughs> God. Or another one I'm thinking of is like uh 
if you want to live another 10 years, check out this new uh, 50 year life DLC. <laughs> okay. Oh, man. That'd be kind of cool. Also, kind of shit, you know? Oh, you have not synced with the cloud in 24 hours. Please <laughs> subscribe now to activate your subscription or die. Thank you. I see you're having oh. sexual intercourse right now. If you'd like to come, please uh, pay three dollars. <laughs> if you'd like to deep, if you'd like to deep blow the body of the person you're having intercourse with, please pay us a subscription for five right now. <laughs> That's the Asian version where everything's censored by default. You have to pay a subscription to uncensor. <laughs> that was a Black Mirror episode as well. Like yeah. the, where you block people in real life. That that is a terrifying prospect. That could actually be a thing if Neuralink gets on its feet. That yeah. could be terrifying. That was a fucking great episode. That great, was, you know, yeah. horrifying. I love Black Mirror. It's gonna block you in real life. Just the LC just a blur and I can't hear you. All here is. <laughs> <laughs> That's so terrifying. Oh. You sound like the the Charlie Brown adult. I don't know. I like the future. I think it'll be cool. I've always envisioned a future full of robots, uh, and fucking cool technology. Kind of like the Jetsons, but less goofy AF. You know, um, Jetsons is peak. But I know it's just awful. It's gonna get worse. My ideal future is like Frutiger, <laughs> Frutiger Arrow shit. That. Um. Well, I'd explain it, but it's very off topic. Uh, That's but... fine. Podcast. We can go off topic. So basically, um, a lot of stuff from like you know how like different decades have like what they think the future is gonna be like. Like a different style. Yeah. The early 2000s had their version of what they thought the future was going to look like. And that was a Frutiger Arrow. Oh, wait. Is, is that the one that you showed me before? Where it was like kind of cool plasticky type shit? Or... Yeah. Yeah, okay. I understand. That, that'd be nice, but I think we're, we're past it. That shit's... Oh, probably. It's, no, it's nostalgic, of course. But I haven't seen anything like that nowadays, sadly. It'd be cool, though. I, I think we will eventually get into the realm of, like, a cyberpunk. Not necessarily where cyberpunk's located. Well, that will be Detroit eventually. But, um... <laughs> that's besides the point. Um, I think we will get into that, like... Deus Ex or cyberpunk shit where everybody's gonna eventually be able to upgrade their own bodies and fucking modify themselves however they want, add little, you know, little shits everywhere. And completely replace all their own bio-organic parts. Um, Have a heart failure? Just teleport a new one and there you go. Having heart failure? Have your local rip doc just rip it out for you and put a new one in. You want to know what the sad case is? It's going to be like Cyberpunk 27, uh, 2077, but without all the cool shit. <laughs> it's going to be like, yeah. you're going to fucking work for the rest of your life. Uh, what's that? You got arthritis? No, there's no fucking tech to fix that. Deal with it, asshole. <laughs> you can never die. Are your implants rejecting you? Well, that's your own fucking problem. Yeah, exactly. You don't fucking have implants. You'll just be a regular human. Having to bust your back just so you can afford your cardboard box, baby. <laughs> and eventually the IRS will take away your cardboard box. Luke doesn't have to. Right, Luke? You're one of the top elites. You'll be on top of the world. Oh, You'll be oh, spitting please. on us, won't you? No, no, no. no. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> the one percent. Oh, Crash well. said, I go stream, have a good podcast. Goodbye, Crash. Thank I you for listening. I was going to say, do you want me to read out the chat? Because there's quite a few messages. Go ahead, Lou. Read out the chat. <clears throat> me, 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 me. All right. Uh, Crash Bass said, ready gamer one type shit, lol. Uh, player one, asterisk. That makes me, that makes me think of Upload. It's a show where they upload your consciousness where you die, where you die to retirement servers. The more money you have, the better your your afterlife. I go stream. I have good podcast. 
That was also a Black Mirror episode. It was the, yeah. the fucking Juno. I, Juno I, know ex- I know exactly the name of that episode. It was so peak. That's my favorite one. It's called San Pellegrino, I think it was. I thought it was Juno. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. I just know it was. It might be, but that I, was. I didn't place. like that episode. Oh, I love that. This reminds me of Soma. Soma's good. I like that. Though everyone fucking spoiled it for me. And I couldn't enjoy it to the fullest extent. Oh, that stinks. I don't think I've played that game or heard about it. <laughs> it's good. Nice. If I'd you like horror, it. uh, it's a good game. If you're afraid of the ocean and afraid of horror, it's probably going to be the worst experience of your life. All right. Definitely not <laughs> playing it then. Okay. <laughs> yep. It'll give you a mental. Not playing it. That's two of my actually biggest feels <laughs> all around the ocean. Oh, I love Christ. the ocean, dude. I've been um, scuba diving out in the Pacific. Uh, there was a Pacific giant octopus there. I actually got to feed him a crab and swim with him. He was fucking huge. Um, give him your number. Huh? You give the crab your number. <laughs> I'm not the deep from the boys. <laughs> Do you wish you were? This, this could be us. <laughs> this could be us. <laughs> Mashes the tank and the octopus dies. God. <laughs> oh, that just that. made me think of a really good question talking about the water. Um, what is more scary uh, like to be in? Would you rather be under the water or in space? If you had to choose. Oh, that's... A t- I'd go with space, though. Yeah, I'd just space. Freak. I say space because you're you'll you'll fucking you'll die a less horrific death in space, so it'll be instantaneous. Yeah, space space would be less painful probably. I'd just yeah. be floating. Also wouldn't be living my actual worst nightmare being in the middle of the ocean. Well, the thing is, in the ocean there are things that will hurt you. Whereas in space, the only things that will hurt you are things you've made up in your own mind and occasionally a stray asteroid. No, take your helmet off and you're there. You go. Well, and suffocating. But that's a given. <laughs> and you're, you're gone. That's a that's a given for both. Would you guys rather die or live? Of course. I like living. Depends what day of the week you ask. I like living. <laughs> like I've always said, I want to live forever. I want to outlive this planet. What? She's horrible. That is horrible. Like, oh, you see all the people you care about dying for that. Uh, that's no. Uh, that's fine. Well, eventually they'll just fade from. It would. Yeah. Then he'd be, he'd be constantly making new. I mean, if he wants to, he'd be making constantly new friends and and acquaintances, and he would just keep seeing them die and die and die and die. His brain I'd would turn into like it. spaghetti. <laughs> You'd become numb to it, Jesus. Christ. Thousands of years later. All right, wife number fifty. Time to get married. <laughs> oh, well, <laughs> this is yeah. my first wife in fifteen thousand years. No, knowing Zeno, he'd probably try and repopulate constantly. So it, it it could just be his kid in the future. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! Don't say God. that. Fifty like fucking fire moment. Fifty that's fucking years down up. the line. Now, well, I'm just saying that's what would happen. You'd fuck too many girls, so that it'd be like you're this saying my that fucking like, daughter. I have a chance just because I'm living forever that I'm having a chance to fuck like a plethora of women. Well, you fucking better have a chance, or else what the fuck, you know? <laughs> yeah. You have infinity to, to get game. That's all that's all enough time I'd say. Get game. Not enough time. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, what would you do if someone walked up to your fly girl and hit her one of these? What? I'm dancing. I'm dancing right now. Never mind. <laughs> he said it too fast. He's what would you do if someone came up to your fly girl and gave her one? Yep. Boom. But is one I'm of learning these. the language. I'm tr- I'm trespassing the fucking accent, baby. <laughs> Let's get uh, it rolling. No, you're not, because that. <laughs> no, dude. no, I'm not gonna use the full Scottish lingo and on this podcast. That would awful podcast. Yeah, me too. <laughs> you somebody that looked like Justy <laughs> walked up to your girl and was like, "All right, listen, guy, would you fuck that?" Would you fuck that woman right there? The one that you're holding the hand to? What would I'd you put, do? 
put five dollars in his cup and be like, no, thank you. <laughs> hey, that's five dollars, baby. And that's for oh, just asking a question, you know. <laughs> that's just a good day. Questions. What if just see somebody walk up to you and be like, yo, twenty dollars? Fuck my day. See, no thanks. I'm a fucking I'm gonna kill you now. <laughs> <laughs> start, I'd be like a fucking escape monkey from the zoo. I'd start tearing at their face. <laughs> it wouldn't even because it would be because of the question. It's just because I'm mentally that hinged. Thank you. That's what's gonna happen to Justy if he does look past fifty. Same one days. You'll you'll all turn just... into a deranged chimpanzee. I'll fucking tune in and I'll be a different person. I won't even be saying <laughs> words, it'll just be. <laughs> Anyways, boys, um, about an hour 30 to the podcast. Is there anything else you'd like to talk about? I have to take a shower. What's your uh... favorite genre? Yeah. I fucking love roguelites. I love them. Um, anything where it's like you go through the dungeon and then you keep some meta fucking progress. Peak, dude. I love it. Um, it's almost, I'd say roguelikes are kind of like gambling a little bit. Maybe that's why I like them so much. Because you don't know what you're going to get. But the difference is, is that you have to have the skill to pay the bills, baby. If you get a shit run, you gotta roll with it, baby. Roll with the punches. What's your guys' favorite genres of video games? Hmm? Probably good. RPGs. That's good. I like RPGs a lot. RPGs like are very story good. Game. Story games that I can just kind of sit there, kind of self-insert, and just enjoy good story. I'm kind of torn as to which genre is my favorite. I'm like, Platformer. I don't know, it, depend it depends on the day, right? Some days it's platformers. Some days it's uh, third-person shooters, like, you know, the Ratchet and Clank games. Um, but I guess those also kind of count as platformers. I don't really know. Third-person shooter platformers. Yeah, it's like a mix of uh, genres. <laughs> exactly. What about you, Luke? Uh, mine's is adventure RPGs, like Skyrim, Fallout, that kind of thing. Good. Anything else that anyone would like to check? Uh, at least for me, I think that was everything I could have thought to chat about. Right. What about you, Luke? Um, I think I had just one final thing related to video games. Uh, I think uh, I had the question for everyone uh, I know earlier we were talking about uh, remasters and remakes what do we think uh, and because I was talking about Red Dead Redemption earlier but we don't have to focus on that, what do we think about re-releases like where they don't improve anything, they just make it work with a, a newer platform and don't <laughs> touch it whatsoever, what do we think about re-releases I think like they should Skyrim. be cheaper I, I think it's perfectly fine, because uh, whatever, you it's know. It's basically just a port, um, I, and at that point, it should just be cheaper. Especially yeah, just don't make it $50. Later. I, don't it think it, be, yeah. I don't think it should be cheaper at all. Hot really? take. Yeah. If you're, if you're stupid enough to wait for it to get to your platform, then you gotta pay the same price as everybody else, dude. What did it say? You know? That's like, I don't know, that's like if Halo was suddenly not a PC and Xbox exclusive, then it came to uh, PlayStation and it was like $5. Like, no, you guys don't get a fucking discount just because you waited, just because you couldn't fucking get over and play it, dude. Pay the same price. Pay the piper. Pay the toll. Pay the piper, yeah, pay but, the toll. Uh, and to, to circle back to Red Dead Redemption, that being a, a re-release, that game isn't even like the same price as it was when it came out on on the on the Xbox and PS3. It's actually more expensive. Yeah, what I don't do I don't agree with do that. that. That's okay. increasing. That's hiking the price, and they shouldn't do that either. It shouldn't be a discount. 
shouldn't be hyped up. It should be what it was when it came out. But I also think that like the price of things. I also think in the same vein, games that uh, are like just a re uh, remaster. If you already own that same game, you shouldn't have to pay full price for the same game again with just a new coat of paint, basically. Maybe. Because, I don't know, you, you do have a point. You basically are just getting the same game, but what, it's got new graphics or some shit like that? You know? But at the like, same I already, time... I've already paid full price for your game. You know? Like... Why do I have to pay full price for your game a second time? I, the same platform. I guess for me, uh, my big issue is is that people shouldn't support shit if they don't like it, but people still do it anyways. So, it's like I'm um, more than willing to continue to support it if it's cheaper, but I'm not going to pay a full price for the same game with just a new coat of paint. I, I would stick to your guns and. That's how we make people, uh, big companies stop fucking doing any tactics of how we can just charge the same price for something that, uh, basically the same fucking thing. Um, that's what my stupid ass did for, uh, some different games, like the Jack and Daxter games. I got the PS2 version. I bought the PS3 version when that came out. <laughs> the Vita version. And then when it came to PS4, I bought that too. Wait, yeah. did you buy the, the limited run games versions? Um, no, I didn't get specifically that. I uh, downloaded it on PSN. Oh, because I was going to say those are very expensive. Um, I'm crazy, I, but I'm not that crazy. To, to kinda, I'll kind of just wrap up one point, to be honest. Uh, I think, I do agree that if you already own the game and they bring a, a HD remaster version of it i think if you own the game you should get a, he a heavy discount but if you don't own the game then fair enough full price because you yeah. don't own the game i think that's fine skyrim did that uh what do you call it dark souls did that when they did the, the the remaster um i think they should keep doing that but i'm sick of this this time limited stuff that they do they only do it for a specific amount of time and i don't understand why they do that that, that that they should just keep it like that if you own the game yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, and that's what I'm saying. If, like, if you own the game, regardless of how much time has passed, you should get a discount on the HD remake or whatever. I'm just thinking, yeah. corporation. They're gonna. The corporation is a multi billion gonna... company that doesn't actually care about you. They're they're have to pay all fucking stuff, die, dude. Die if they don't. For $30. Think about Jeez, the corporations. <laughs> I fucking hate oh, people like that. Misery. Like, uh, dude, listen, you have to pay full price because if you don't, then the fucking coders, you know, they're gonna get underpaid, the artists, like, yeah, like, they already don't. Come on, dude, get the fuck up. I got, I got another question before wrap this out. Uh, yeah? During the console wars, what were oh. you guys? <laughs> oh god. I was dead I, on PlayStation as a kid. I had an Xbox. I was I was PlayStation Die Hard, and then at near the end of the console generation, I got a 360. Did you change I had, sides? I had an Xbox for the longest time, and then I got a PC and I never looked back. Do I fucking I was an Xbox boy myself? Um, I, I, I was still playing Minecraft on the Xbox 360, uh, and then I was sick and fucking tired of paying an extra, like, what is it, 15 or $30 a month just so I can use my fucking internet, which I already have to pay an extra fucking $80 for? Yeah, I don't fucking think so, dude. <laughs> PC time. That, that, that was a good ridiculous. thing about PlayStation 3. Um, what? The fact that the online was free. You'd have to pay a subscription. Uh, that's so fucking stupid. Like, what? You know, why would Microsoft ever think, ah, oh, let's not let them get on the internet, you know? The thing that's already in their fucking house, more than likely. 
I don't know, that's just so stupid. Yeah. PS3 the money. had something slight PS3 had something slightly uh worse for their later games. Forgot what it was called, but it was like online oh. pass you had to pay oh, exactly. for. Exactly. Yeah, the online passes and if you and if for some reason you you lost or like you cuz sometimes it would send like whenever you unwrapped brand new video games, the the publishers or whatever forgot to put in that 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 little slip that had the code on it. You you had to have the code to play online on the game. Mm. <laughs> Oh, truly awful. Honestly, I think the end of the PS3's lifespan, uh, if it didn't go the way it did, like with the, the online pass bullshit, and then Sony stopped giving so much of a shit uh, about their about their players, I think if PS3 continued the way it started, I wouldn't even be a PC gamer today. I would I'd be a diehard Sony fanboy, I'm not going to lie to you, because <laughs> the early days of PlayStation was peak, and if they didn't do, if they didn't do the actions they did at the end, Going into the PS4, I, I wouldn't have been a PC gamer to be honest. Yeah, mm. I, I can't, I can't agree with you there. Cause I saw Gary's mod and I said, "Yeah, I'm fucking moving over, dude." <laughs> that well, shit, that always, shit was I always wanted a PC for the longest time, but then uh, I never had a computer until I was fourteen, fifteen. That's peak time to have a computer. That's when you look up all the weird stuff. Like this a little bit. Yeah, no, that, that's when, you know, all the weird porn fetishes got discovered. Uh, <laughs> but, um, yeah, I didn't have a PC for the longest time. And once I did, I just stopped giving a fuck about consoles entirely. Then I kept getting told by, like, everybody else, like, they were all like, yeah, eventually everything will come to PC. Like, okay, then I'm not going to care about the console at all. And look where we are. Everything's coming to PC. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was like, man, hopefully I would never emulate ever Twitch. Okay, never in my fucking life would I ever do that. That's illegal. But uh, I did have the mind process of like, oh man, how the hell am I ever gonna play Red Dead Redemption? It's gonna suck to fucking emulate that shit. It's gonna be awful. Um, but here we are. It just came out like not too, like what a few days ago. On PC, like that. yeah, yeah, it, it took a it while. Also came out with DLC Undead Nightmare at the same time. I think the uh, from what I for, okay, so I'm not gonna name names, but like I, one of my friends works for Rockstar uh, to this day, and I asked him for years, "What the what, what the fuck is Red Dead Redemption? Do, do you have like any internal <laughs> memos about like what the fuck's going on with that? It's been decades, and it, and all all I got told was." Uh, that is one of many instances in the video game industry where they didn't, they lost all documentation for their code base, and their code base was such a clusterfuck of code that they just couldn't, <laughs> they, they, they had to recreate the entire game from the ground up if they wanted to port it. So, yeah, that was the kind of the downside of that generation. A lot of code just was just clusterfucky. Yeah. Uh, well, didn't the PlayStation 3 have like a shitty fucking thing to program for anyway? Yep. Uh huh. Cell architecture. It could only. <laughs> it was a bitch to code for because it was so nuanced and like the. It was something to do with like the way it rendered distances and stuff. It was a whole. Yeah. So that's why like all the worst versions of multi-platform games were on the PS3. Uh, that's why everyone moved. That's why everyone went to Xbox to play multi-platform. That also explains why a lot of exclusives like looked really good because those, you know, what would you call them? Triple A devs, I guess. The uh, consoles, you know, they, uh, they kind of, they, I guess they're in the know, you know. Yeah, they had yeah, like, a lot of games. Gave them the documentation for the how to, you know, make things on there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know. Uh, to, to kind of wrap that subject up for me, I would also say, I don't know. It, it's kind of become an ass backwards for me as I get older because obviously I'm now starting to get into like the collecting side of it and I won't go on about collecting because everyone will be bored about it but I'm starting to regress to when I was in high school and going back to consoles a lot more because I don't know I feel like I'm having this weird appreciation for consoles that I didn't really have during the time because I was living it uh, obviously PC is still absolutely peak of like playing video games and emulation and all that kind of stuff but I don't know there's something really cool about Popman a, a disc or even if you, you, I don't know, you, 
you know, Twitch legally, you know, rip your game from a disc and throw it on the hard drive. <laughs> uh, there's something, I don't know, there's something nice about seeing the UI and and just even even consoles I don't own I've collected for. I never grew up with them, but I don't know, there's, there's a, an interest in uh, appreciation. I relive the yeah. past until for a final brain death or something. Well, I mean, I don't know about that, because... That's a question for Within the Flesh. <laughs> Go check out that series on YouTube, everyone. <laughs> yep! Anyway, hey, you. Um, I think that's it for the... What a fantastic mm-hmm. Bibble Babble started off a little bit stiff, but I think everyone uh, got a little bit more loosened up when started going further away from oh, we gotta talk only about game shop. You know, the point of Bibble Babble is to Bibble Babble. Bibble Exactly. Bibble Babble. So, I appreciate every one of you coming in here and chatting with me. I appreciate it dearly. Uh, Again, uh, it was Xeno. Hi. It was Retro. Bye-bye. And it was Luke. Hello. (laughs) Uh, And thanks everyone uh, who chatted in the chat. Thanks a lot, bozos, for watching, if you did. Um, yeah, you bunch of losers. But I'll, I'll upload this on YouTube uh, on Monday. If anyone wants to listen to the earlier parts that they didn't get to or did like that. Uh, thanks, everyone, for tuning in. It's a great time. I love you too, Lou. In the moon. You know what? You know what? Fuck.